Hello, hello, everybody, and welcome back to another episode of Fluently Ford. I am here with the legendary, notorious Caroline Calloway. We are seated here in Sarasota, Florida. How's it going? Welcome to the show. Happy to have you here. Thank you so much. Thank you for having me. I'm excited because we are going to be diving in for the bulk of this episode about Gaylor. Is Taylor Swift gay? Is she bi? Is she fan? It's one of my favorite things to talk about. I've been doing a Taylor Swift embargo lately because I just thought she was a little bit too overexposed. So we got to scale totally. back. Um, but no, not today. We're, today we're going mask off. So the first <laughs> thing I want to do before we get into it is I want to tell people a little bit about you. I feel like most of our listeners are you know, chronically online. And I say that with love in my heart because I am too. I was going to finish that sentence. Yeah. Most of our listeners have no fucking idea who I am because I'm not famous like the oh, real no. people you cover okay I would say yeah most people do know who you are and I was gonna say the chronically online I could also call them the vitamin d deficient which is like me because like my screen time is like 11 hours every day <laughs> but it's your job that's true girl just math working hard <laughs> working hard girl nutrients girl math but you are I was describing you to my family last night as I realized that you were in the area. Why not throw together this podcast? And my family was spellbound by the tale <laughs> because you have so much lore around you. And a lot of people who know about you can't help but kind of be obsessed. So I'll kind of give you the version that I told my family. Okay, and then okay. you tell me what's I accurate. Hear it. Or not. I want to hear it. So they said, Who's Caroline Calloway? And I say, She's this notorious influencer. She started back in the days of early Instagram. And she would post these photos of her life, but instead of just doing a caption, she would almost do like a blog post. So it's like she was blogging on Instagram. It was these long, winding paragraphs. People were really gripped by it. Yeah. She's living this fancy life. She's going to Cambridge, ball gowns, castles. People are really entranced by it. She has this friend who it turns out there an, an article comes out later and the friend is saying, I was helping her write those captions. Like, I deserve credit for it. Caroline's like, you did a tiny percentage of it. Like, you were my friend. We worked on this together. All this drama ensues at the same time. Now you're living in a West Village studio apartment that's notorious. I've seen it <laughs> recreated on The Sims, which I love. I love that too. The studio becomes famous. You know, you have this cat, you have plants all over your apartment. You're kind of living this like wild life, getting into beef with an old friend hosting these creative workshops for people who also want to be on Instagram. Some people say the workshops are a scam. You kind of start to lean into it. You start selling merch that's snake oil and other things that are kind of scammy, like, I don't know, watercolors, all of that to make money. And then how did it end? I don't know. I was telling my parents about a bunch of stuff. We kept getting You're like, And then she lived happily ever after. And then she, and, and, yeah. and then she became a well-respected writer at the end. <laughs> oh, yeah. That was it. Okay. That was it. So basically then I say – all of this lore is going around that there's this scammer influence out there, kind of this like Anna Delvey, Elizabeth Holmes, all of these comparisons, these articles are being written. And she's got this reputation for not writing the books that she says she's going to write. But then I say, then she finally drops the book Scammer. And it's a masterpiece. It's like incredible <laughs> yeah. writing. It's beautiful verses and like these flowing kind of poetry. It took me a while to get through it because even though it's a very readable book. It's very dense. It's very dense. Like I would read a couple pages and then I just kind of stop and stare into space. And it Good. made me think about mm -hmm. like my life, your life. One of the things I loved about your book is, um, and I love female celebrities for this reason too, and influencers. Something that girls and women have and men don't have, the ability to cultivate an aesthetic, I feel like is very feminine. And I love pouring through like Suki Waterhouse and looking at her hair or like Zendaya's red carpet looks or somebody's Architectural Digest house tour. And I feel like you have all those qualities where when I think of you, I can put adjectives to like who you are. I can... If I imagine you living in a space, there's candle wax on the floor. Oh, you'll see it after Polaroids, this podcast. Yeah, and candle We're wax on the little... floor. But you're so good at honing this image. And I feel like there's bits of you that are like Gwyneth Paltrow and Lana Del Rey and like Anna Delvey all combined. So my initial first question is, what celebrity do you think you kind of see yourself in or you guys have like similar vibes or aesthetics? Lana Del Rey is a good one. Yeah. Um, but, you know, a Taylor Swift in a way, just in the sense that she's so diaristic and so such a – What does that, that word mean? <laughs> diaristic? Like oh, a like diary. she writes her diary. Yeah, 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 so yeah. Like, like her writing is so memoir heavy. Yeah. Um, but, you know, it's funny. The, the people I think of myself as are more like 
Elizabeth Wurzel, who went to Harvard and mm. like Cambridge girly, just very sad on a lot of antidepressants, very mentally ill, wrote Prozac Nation. Sylvia Plath was an American student at Cambridge, also very sad. I think of myself as like a uh, sad. I think of myself <laughs> as like a sad Cambridge girly is how I think of it in my head. So like when you say celebrities, I my first thought was them because they're to me like my biggest inspirations but I understand that not everyone is going around obsessing over the sad Cambridge girlies of the world yeah yeah so in that case Lana Del Rey is a good one Kat Marnell mm. uh Julia Fox definitely like some yeah. performance art elements in there um I I oh, love Emma you... Watson just because she's like Cambridge. so <laughs> yeah she's so yeah, there's something so Hermione. There's a spring. There are Hermione sprinkles on the brand, you know, oh, for sure. Totally. So like, I guess a mix of those, but it's also very Lana in the sense that it's very like preppy Americana, but like a mess. But none of the LA stuff that Lana has. She has a complete monopoly on yes, that. Yes, but like the chaotic type of poetry yes. vibes there. Yes. I find it very interesting how um, when you speak and then also when you write, it's almost like a it's very descriptive words. It's a lot of imagery, a lot of focus on Cambridge. And I've always been someone where I really envy the aesthetic. Like some people build this aesthetic or they have a good sense of style. And I've always, I feel like we live in this world where nowadays people think that beauty and visual importance and aesthetic isn't meaningful. And humans crave that, right? Like we're visual creatures. Our dopamine receptors get fired up when we see something beautiful that we like. And I find it so sad that like, especially here in the States, if you see a pole it'll just be like a lamppost and it's like a silver metal rod. And then you go over to somewhere in Europe and it's like this beautiful ornate structure. Yes, like Victorian yeah. masterpiece. Yeah. So have you just always loved the aesthetic or is it like a muscle that you have to work to cultivate to like try to, I don't know, like capsulate, embody that? No, I have a theory. Um, you know how physical illness, like back in the day, a French king would die and we'd be like, They'd be like, no one knows why it's the French disease. And now we're like, that king had syphilis and oh, yeah. he died because <laughs> he had he was syphilitic. Yeah. And I really hope that in addition to living to get to see aliens, I hope I live long enough to get to see us understand mental health so much that we're able to go back and diagnose things retroactively in the way that we have with our understanding of bacteria and germs and disease. Because I just... I mean, the gray, the brain is 91% gray matter, and we don't even know what gray matter is. And I can say that I have depression and that, like, I'm a sad Cambridge girly, but we, and that's fun and flirty, and it's, it's great, a great coping mechanism to joke about the more serious things in life. But I would love to know exactly, more specifically, what I have besides depression, because, like, mm. for example, when I... I think the reason that I'm so drawn to beauty is because I've always found it really difficult to like feel pleasure and to like be happy. And I think there's something like broken in my brain. Mm. And I think I'm just so entranced by hyper satur hyper beauty saturated worlds because it's like it's like osmosis like you want to get some of it yeah it's like it's like at least I can finally feel it it's like the colors have to be that much brighter for me to like be able to feel something. Yeah. I remember you saying in one of these podcasts that, you know, you would go to Yale so often to walk around the campus yeah. because growing up, like you just didn't have that sense of like beauty or like pristine, like clean lines where everything's orderly. So yeah. it felt good to like be around that. It felt that. so good. And you know, it's funny. I now, um, when I first got on antidepressants, I bought like, you know, a great bridge. Do you know Dossier? They should be sponsoring this. I, Wait, they're a, like a perfume. Is that the perfume where they're it's like perfume perfumes dupes. that are like, yeah, dupes? I bought, and they're like $29. I bought so many of them because obviously I could smell before antidepressants. It wasn't like I didn't have a sense of smell. And you smell great today, by the way. Oh, thank you. Yeah. It's Dossier. Go. <laughs> it's the Baccarat like 540 yes. dupe or whatever. Yeah. Um, but I, I literally could smell before but I didn't get any joy from it and after mm. I got on antidepressants I bought like so many perfumes because I just like for the first time ever something as small as like a pleasant scent made me happy like people yeah. used to talk about like sunsets and like views from very high up and it's like you're very high up like what's the big like I this 
the, no, but sky, it, it the makes sky's sense. a different color. Yeah. I don't get it. And like now on antidepressants, I still don't totally get views. I still don't like, okay, we're higher up. We're yeah. not on the ground anymore. So what? But sometimes the sunset will be like stunning enough that I'll be like, all right, I'm feeling, I'm feeling Dude, the something. The brain is from insane. This. I was on um, Zoloft for like two months before I got off because I just felt like, you know, I wasn't like my emotions were kind of numbed. But in that time I was on it. The main thing that stuck out to me was I was so excited to try different types of food. Like for some reason growing up, like I've always been a buttered noodle girly. Like, I don't know, for some reason, like I have an underdeveloped palate. But when I was on antidepressants, I was like, oh, my God, like when I go to the grocery store, I should be trying things I've never tried before, which like it's yeah. expensive to do that. So you it, don't it, want to. Yes. But it made me want to like push the boundaries of stuff I hadn't thought about pushing for years. Yes. And I these anecdotal examples are like the closest we can get at this moment in medical history yeah. to explaining this phenomenon. And in terms of like why I was so drawn to beauty, it's just like all I have are these anecdotal examples. But I do hope that someday we'll be able to be like, oh, this is depression type B, you yeah. know, like Roman numeral five or something. <laughs> or it'll probably get its own like English word for. Do you ever take like, do you know what your Myers-Briggs or your Enneagram is? Yes, I'm an ENFP. <laughs> Me too. Yeah. Right yeah. On. Okay, wait, <laughs> nice. can I guess? Do you know your Enneagram? I think I do. Are you a four? Or yes, seven? I'm a four. A four? Yeah. yeah, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> okay. By the way, wait, I want to just say something to your viewers oh, as sure. like a little like promo for you oh. as a person. <laughs> so on the car ride here, we realized- You're like, she farted. <laughs> no. On, our, on the car ride here, we realized that Shannon's ex had matched with me on Hinge, Hinge yeah, like years, years ago. ago before I was out as being bi. Mm -hmm. And Shannon very ethically kept that to herself. And she could have- Well, I might have told me. like- one you're like, I friend. told all of New York, bitch. <laughs> no, like, I told, like, like, I told like a, everyone that you're bi. <laughs> my best friend got it. But no, yeah, no, I wouldn't let that out to but people. But that's so, I just think that's so, there are a lot of, especially in the celebrity gossip space yeah. online, I just think there are a lot of people who wouldn't have made that choice. And I oh, think it's really nice. nice I will say it is a little bit ironic because you're like, you kept my secret. And then for the next like 15 minutes, I'm about to be like, Taylor Swift is so bisexual. Well, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> but th this isn't stuff that I know. This is just me reading her lyrics and trying to analyze yes, them yes, in a yes. way. If you had a screenshot of Taylor Swift matching with your friend on Hinge. Yeah, that, that I would keep to myself and I would never talk about it. It's but one thing to God, have a, a speculative dialogue and it's another yes. thing to ethically sit on hard evidence, which you did. Yeah. And I think well, that's thank really you. Nice. Thank you. In another world, you guys could have dated and boy, that would have been fun. Oh, me and your ex? Yeah. I thought you were talking about me and Taylor Swift. And I was like, bitch, she just dated Maddie Healy. <laughs> <laughs> the girl, our, Blondie loves a canceled babe. <laughs> yeah. She, and she likes somebody who's a little bit depressed, too. So there we go. Although I don't know if Maddie Healy likes beautiful things because I think he would fix that hair if he did, you know? Ooh, burn, sorry. Burn. Sorry about it. I actually think Maddie Healy is so attractive. I, I get oh, yeah, her attraction to him more than the Travis Kelsey thing. Have you seen that on TikTok? Oh, my God. I There's so many things in the car ride that I... Oh, we would start talking. I don't know why I'm talking straight into camera. Like, <laughs> Look wherever feel, you want. I feel crazy. But um, but we um, – We were talking about Taylor we, Swift. Yeah, no, no. In the car, there were so many things that I'd, like, go to tell you, and then I'd stop myself and be like, we have to save it for oh, the yeah, podcast. Oh, yeah, because we're yes. talking about good gossip. Here. Yes. Okay, so did you see that TikTok where someone from SNL was doing stand-up, uh -huh. and they were either a cast member when he hosted – or a writer or something like that. And <clears throat> she was like, Travis Kelsey cannot read. Like, for a fact, <laughs> I know he cannot read. Him and Leah Michelle man out here struggling. And I just, how long is our modern day Shakespeare mm. going to be able to be, albeit railed, by mm -hmm. someone who cannot read? Okay. Yeah. <laughs> well, I also think there's a chance her and Leah Michelle could have hooked up. So maybe she does have a type, and that type is I mean, uh, illiterate. Who among us has not <laughs> fucked a himbo? <laughs> like, may, may they throw the first stone? Well, here's the thing. Travis Kelsey, I think, is I don't know much about him, but did you see when he was on SNL? Because he did a great job on it. Yeah. No, he was hilarious. I think he does a good job. I think he's one of those guys that just always will do a, a job on everything that they get the chance to do. Unless it's the reading SAT section, which we just found out. Um, so yeah. I don't know. I mean, I'm happy to spread a rumor. You heard it here first, guys. Travis Kelsey can't read. Listen, it's from the, it's from my TikTok algorithm. So like, <laughs> okay, well, I don't, blame it on a TikTok. The, the SNL cast member who's spilling this gossip. Yeah, but yeah, I I understand the Maddie Healy attraction more because Maddie Healy can definitely read. He can definitely read. 
This episode of Fluently Forward is brought to you by Mood, a new sponsor I am incredibly excited about. One of my favorite DMs that I will get from you floozies is somebody saying, I love to get high and listen to Fluently Forward, or I'm lighting up, I'm about to listen to your latest episode about Taylor Swift maybe being gay, and I'm going to do some laundry, and I know that we are all a fan of the flower here at Fluently Forward, okay? So let me tell you a little bit about Mood. They're known for their federally legal THC, but they also have a new potent product. This is something called THCA Flower. And this is this breakthrough in the world of legal cannabis where basically THCA converts into THC when you heat it so you get access to the classic marijuana high. So for any floozies who's looking to chill out, relax, or for a moment of calm in between all of these salacious blind items and rumors that we talk about, you got to check out Mood. Try their new THCA flower today and you get 20% off your first order and a free gram of the THCA. THCA flower. So you can go to hellomood.com and use the promo code fluently. That's hello, M O O D.com with the promo code fluently for 20% off your order and a free gram of THCA flower. Put up this beautiful picture here of these two lovely ladies, Carly Kloss and Taylor Swift. I know that you are obviously a big Swifty. I know that you've explored these topics of love them. bisexuality. I want to say up front before we talk about this, like I when I talk about Taylor Swift's sexuality, like a total, you know, creep and pervert. But, you know, that's kind of on both of those things. I don't like it when people speculate on sexuality in a stereotypical sense. So if people are like she has short fingernails and she wore Doc Martens once, like she's obviously gay. I personally think that she's bi. I think of it more in the sense of um, when I listen to her music and all of these themes of if society found out about our love, it would be ruined. And we have these big reputations would be such a big conversation, but I'm clutching it onto our secrecy with white knuckles because if anyone finds out, it's going to be absolutely destroyed. And then I'm looking at her with Joe Alwyn and Calvin Harris, and I'm going, what are you doing, girl? You guys are a Norman (laughs) Rockwell painting. Why are you so terrified? And you could say it's because, right, the public overanalyzes all of her relationships. But she's a smart girl. She's not going to write 25 different songs about the paparazzi and her relationship because she knows that that won't sell. So I just think that a lot of these songs um, could be about a different type of, you know, I even think this could be like an age gap relationship or a same sex relationship. And when I first saw her with Carly Kloss, it just reminded me so much of different relationships I had had in my life where I had a best girlfriend and we were also romantic with each other. When did you first hear of like the Gale or theories and what was your initial reaction to them? Um, I wish I could tell you like like when 9-11 happened, like exactly where I was. Sure. But I cannot remember when they entered my awareness at all. Although I'm really intrigued. You had friendships that turned into more because I've had really close friendships. And honestly, I feel like the whole cut debacle of 2019 could have been avoided if Natalie and I had just fucked at least once. <laughs> like, like, I really think a lot of strife and tragedy could have just been sidestepped. Like, she didn't have to, like, try to claim authorship of all those things that I wrote or try to throw me under the bus. It's like when you're dating like a like a boy or something. Sometimes if you're if you have an argument and then you guys just have sex, suddenly the dishes don't matter. It's, yes. It's a, yes. You know, the, it relieves could, things. But um, but you found a way to make those friendships into more. I mean, we didn't date, but we were certainly physical. How did that go? Like Al- I, alcohol, 100 percent alcohol. <laughs> There's your answer. Did you guys try getting drunk together ever? <laughs> clearly not enough not hard enough <laughs> i'm like it takes exactly three martinis yeah. on a wednesday night after you had a bunch of sushi um okay but when you just first eating sashimi together just yeah, getting absolutely plastered something about the raw fish yeah i um but there were like lots of moments and you know like in scammer i write about this one moment where we took this trip this very romantic couples trip to sicily together me i thought and you were Natalie. gonna say big sir for no, a second yeah, yeah, yeah. No, sicily okay but looks not unlike this out yeah. the windows very hilly shrubby sort of landscape uh-huh. and um and when we got to this little island where we were staying the like a uh, manager of like our b&b um said to me in italian which i speak and natalie does not um your room with two twin beds is actually not ready right now. Um, 
you can have a cocktail on the terrace and wait while we prepare it. Or if you want to put your stuff down, we have one room with a double bed. And because knowing that not and it's it's giving fanfic. It's so crazy the way that I did this in the moment without thinking and then just decided oh, nothing, nothing to explore there psychologically, nothing, nothing to dig into. But I said in Italian, we will take the room with one bed. We'd like to put our stuff down now. Mm. And I, then I said in English to Natalie, they messed up. We have to share a bed. Yeah. And, it, and I just like and I just. I just refuse to let myself think about it more deeply. Well, something that I think very is interesting in your book and um, I hear from a lot of bi ladies is always this idea of like, am I bi or do I just think that she's beautiful? Like, am I bi or do I just get like nervous when she comes over? Like there's so many different ways to yes. so explain how, away a so crush. How did you, uh, yes. So I think what I'm trying to ask specifically is that, yes, you, you the answer is alcohol. Sure. It's three martinis and sushi. Yeah. But I think in order for that to happen, you have to be willing to do some. So we we realized before we started recording, I'm 31, Shannon's 30. Uh -huh. So we came of age with like the same media. Mm. And I remember the first time I saw a bi woman on TV was Tila Tequila's MTV show. <laughs> okay. And they really like I remember the way that they like fetishized her and made they almost like, you know, it seemed obvious that she would end up with a man and that mm. the girls were just sort of like. They really they Porn always put for the, the audience sexual and bisexual. You know, they're always like she's bisexual. Yeah. And it like lends this idea of like she's also a deviant, you know? And remember that? And the next time I saw it on TV was that a Sex in the City episode where I think it's a man this time. And they, they said they, bisexuality they, is a layover on the gay. Yes, way to and they gay just town. said he's gay. Mm -hmm. And so it's like the answer is always men. It's like if you like women and men, you actually just like men. And if you're a man who likes women and men, you're gay. Yeah. And it always leads back to the patriarchy. But anyways, what I'm trying to say is that it just – bi people seemed like such a oddity and a spectacle in like the early 2000s and the late 90s. Um, and I'm so jealous of Gen Z and Gen Alpha. Um Jealous and happy for, but mainly jealous that they're <laughs> growing up with such like widespread cultural acceptance and all these great examples of like bisexuality being taken seriously and celebrated and not fetishized, but just seen as like a very valid way to exist. Mm. And I don't think that I could really, I, the problem for me with being bisexual was since I did like men, like mm. I did find men sexy and like still do, it's like, Coming to terms with like, do do I have a crush on a woman, basically? Yeah, and like accepting that and fitting that into my own self conception of an identity just seemed like so much work. And I was just like, I would have to like sort of build a stronger sense of self to like stand up to all the input I'm getting from society about what a bisexual person is and what it means and whether it's true or not. And I just like, that just seemed so exhausting. It And it just seemed so much easier to just go on autopilot. And like, I didn't mind dating yeah. men. Well, I, I liked dating men. Like, it was fine. That's like, one of the oh. things, right? When people are like, bi I know that there's a lot, like people say like, there's a lot of biphobia out there, but also I like, I I completely understand when lesbians don't want to date people who are bi because bi people I think do have it easier, right? Like if you want to, you can try to live a life where you're completely like heteronormative and that's totally fine. Yeah. And, and and also I, there's so many – it's not just the internal bonuses to being like heteronormative of having that um, internal structure for your identity. It's like when you walk down the street – holding hands with a woman, you're catcalled. But if you walk down the street holding hands with a man, you're definitely not going to be catcalled because you're like his property. Yeah. Or like, you know, women make 70 cents on the male dollar. So it's like, and they're less likely to be promoted. So if you like want a partner with a stable financial household, you, statistically speaking, that's mm. more likely to happen if you do go the heteronormative path. So there are just so many strange incentives. But it's also one of those things to me, at least I've always felt this way, once you fall in love with someone, you're just in love and like that completely takes over. Oh, yeah. So I think whatever happens, happens. I, I've had a lot of girls write in and they're like, how do I know if, um, if I have a crush on a girl or whatever I'm feeling? And I remember I had an old blog post. I think I took it down now. But some of the signs, at least for me, and I'm curious if this was the same for you, one was you're nervous before they come over. So like when a typical friend comes over to hang out with me, like whatever, they're showing up at some time. If it's a 
girlfriend coming over, but I'm changing my outfit three times. I'm putting on an extra coat of mascara. Like, look into why you're doing that. There might be something behind That's it. That's a great one. That's if, really good um, advice. If also, like, if I take photos with my friends at a night out, I'm like, oh, awesome, taking photos. If I'm going in with one specific friend and I'm editing the photo and maybe, like, back in the day of high school, I'm putting in into, like, Picta or one of those apps to like, you know, really hone in on which ones I like of the two of us together. That could be a sign that, the, you know, it's more than just a friendship. If they're talking about hanging out with someone else and you find yourself getting jealous, that could be a sign. But it's hard because you can write off being nervous before they come over as social anxiety yeah. and all or of like these things. Or like my house isn't clean or something yeah. like that. You know, it's like, are you – But like, really, it's whoa. a crush. Like it's yeah. it's a feeling of nerves, but you're scared to assign it to sexuality. So you just go, oh, whatever. Yeah. Anyways, that was I. So you felt maybe you're just like maybe sexuality is a spectrum, and where I lie is like more in the middle, and maybe you were closer to women. That three martinis and sushi was like you were like I, I would do the stone cold sober bitch. <laughs> but maybe you just like because for me there was just. It just, especially when I was younger, especially when the culture was so much different in the early 2010s, coming out of you know, the early aughts, which was pretty solidly biphobic. Mm. I just was so emotionally, psychologically intimidated by the idea of like, if I kiss a girl once or if I like do anything more than just like lay next to someone in a bed and like hope our shoulders brush. Yeah. But don't tell anyone that I'm hoping that. Like yeah. then I'm going to have to change. Who, like I'm going to have to restructure everything about who I thought I was and how I move in the world. And that just seemed like a really big hurdle that I just didn't want to do internally for a long – honestly, until the culture ca caught up. that it's Which is why it's so important to have representation and good mm. role models. And I feel like a broken – But I feel Hallmark like there's something um, fun. That. I know a lot of people were saying, you know, so some – People out there were saying this point about your memoir, basically saying, like, have you always had those feelings about Natalie or was that something that you wrote back into the past? And something that was helpful for me, you know, thinking about how I feel about people is when I look back in my past, yeah, I've always been boy crazy, but I've also always had that like one special girlfriend where yes. something was a little bit different. Totally. And looking at that made it easier for me. It wasn't so much of a reckoning where it's like I was straight and now there's this like tsunami where I'm actually bi. It's like, Oh, you know what? I think I just like dug a little bit and I uncovered that I've always felt this way. Exactly yeah. how I felt. Like I really – and it's so useful that I had those – it's hard to hold on to thoughts that you had. It, there's that great Lord – lord lyric that's like I yeah, yeah yeah that's like with me you never know i'm like that great lord <laughs> yeah <laughs> like, i was like is lord this marlboro thing? quote yeah. um no 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 that great lord lyric that's like i want him back i want him back the thoughts we had the thoughts we had i because it's just like you really more often than not cannot remember what you were thinking at a certain like 10 years ago mm. and it's so great that i had those moments where i made like choices that yeah. were like uh actions and not just thoughts to remember like wanting to be close to her in bed so that I don't feel fucking insane but you know in the next two books that I'm writing in the trilogy in the Instagram trilogy I'm expanding scammer um I'm also making the Cambridge captions which much like Taylor since Natalie sort of did this really good job of positioning herself as like the real author of my Instagram luckily for me since she didn't write any of it. Um, I own the full copyright, so I'm just going to put them in a book and bind them and print them. Mm. And I don't care if it really sells that well. I really just legally feel like I want to have my name on those things that I wrote and just put to bed anyone who's still put to bed those rumors. Yeah, and you for anyone, move on to yeah, who's still there. exactly. I feel like before I can move on, I need to like put this to bed. And the other thing I'm writing is I am Caroline Calloway, which is an essay to her, a response to her essay in The Cut. And in that other book in the trilogy, I Am Caroline Calloway, um, her essay was called I Was Caroline Calloway. I don't think people are, like, not getting the brand. Mm -hmm. Like, I, I wanted to respond to it specifically. She's obviously a public person. I mean, I feel very comfortable writing about her having like her sold me out to advance her career. Mm. 
But the other female friends, the ones that I like held close and treasured, like who aren't public people, like Mm -hmm. where are the ethics on like writing about them? And I'm really trying to figure that out in that book because there are other, just like you said, like you always had that one special female friend, but there's only one. And those are also people where like uh, you don't know where they're at in their journey, right? So just wrapping it around here to Taylor Swift, right? A Mm -hmm. lot of people say like, why hasn't she come out or said this or all of that? And we can dive into some of the different reasons for this. There's a, lot, yes. there's a lot around it, which is great. But I think one is if she does come out, then Carly Kloss is looked at. Diana Akron is looked at. Um, even Gigi Hadid. Like everybody's going to be looked at with this fine tooth comb and kind yes. of this microscope. Yes. So what if you had to think there's a lot of reasons. I personally think one of the reasons she hasn't quote unquote come out yet is because the second she does, everyone's going to pour through her back catalog to say, okay, let's listen to Fearless and Speak Now and Red with the lens of could the song have been about a woman? Out with female friends. And until she has her re-records, that money's all going to Scooter. So what do you think is the reason why she hasn't quote unquote come out? I have been waiting my entire life or at least the past three to five years sure. for someone to ask me this question. Okay, let's get into it. <laughs> because I feel like although I'm so – irrelevant compared to the global supernova stardom mm-hmm. of Taylor Swift. I do feel like I've experienced enough of the public eye that I have real insight into problems that yeah, like normal, her thought pattern or something. Normal people sure. who aren't under that kind of scrutiny don't think about. And what you said about wanting to protect the people around her, like I remember for a while like especially around the cancellation i had like a reddit thread that like followed everything i did and if i tagged anyone in my stories like my friends who have normal jobs who like want to like have their linkedin profile be the first thing when you google them would like get their first and last names dragged into it and Mm -hmm. i really you know taylor swift has that song would it be peace where she's like would it be enough if i could never give you peace and it's obviously i don't have it i can't i'll stop i'll say this one last time and then i'll stop repeating myself mm. I don't have it to this level I don't have it to this level oh, yeah, no, don't but worry. um you get it but I often think like is my action going to make the people I care about or have cared about or is it going to punish them just for being close to me and that's like a real thought that I have and that I think is totally in her brain I think yeah 100% so you think it's a um, fine tooth comb but benevolent I, type of act of kindness of wanting to spare the privacy and, you know, the hurt of other people. Because, we, I mean, we even see it with Travis Kelsey. God knows I wasn't into football. Last week we did an entire episode about the NFL. Really? I've seen all of his different, like, <laughs> facial hair things. And, like, I'm trying to stay away from Taylor Swift. But the minute I think um, Emps, she has this great Tumblr. Who's Emps? EMPS. You've probably seen some of her Tumblr stuff. Her and oh. Cam do a lot of um, episodes together on what I will say. But she says that Taylor's greatest line of all time is the touch me and you'll never be alone line. Because, I mean, even who, like, I don't know who Emps is, like, but she sounds very wise. She's very wise. <laughs> like, even the Haley Steinfeld was, like, in the Bad Blood music video years ago. And I was watching her in an interview. She was in some sort of, like, aristocratic piece or something. Aristocratic No, em- piece? Emily Dickinson. It was oh, like yes, that. yes, yes. I love Dickinson. What do yeah. you mean? Ari- <laughs> I was just thinking it was like old timey. Because she's American. <laughs> candlestick, like whatever. Um, yeah, yeah, yeah. It is very like lace nightgown yeah. with a little like glass cover. She's wearing the Scrooge nightcap to yeah, bed, yeah, yeah, so it's yeah. like that <laughs> time period. And um, they ask her in an interview, they're like, so your friend Taylor Swift, like blah, blah, blah. And it really is like, touch me and you'll never be alone. Like there's something about her where like everyone gets dragged into orbit. I don't think Haley Steinfeld's hung out with her. Well, and now they're both dating NFL guys, so maybe they will. Maybe but, they um, will. But yeah, no, you, we haven't seen them together in years for so sure. So you think it's a so, benevolent act? But I don't think that's the only reason. Yeah. I think that is one reason braided in here. I think another big reason, and I can't emphasize this enough, it's so easy to look at the culture now and think, I know we touched on this before, bisexuality accepted now, wasn't before. But more than that, when I was making content at Cambridge, before I got super addicted to Adderall and was just high all the time, and my biggest problem became getting more little tangerine capsules of amphetamine salts, when my problem, when I was still lucid enough to have my biggest problem being making the best content possible. Mm. So the way I started my Instagram was I bought 40,000 fake followers. Um, And Natalie and I wrote captions for this audience of no one, which is how she was able to sort of make it seem like she did write captions with me. Mm. 
And then we fell out of touch for the next two to three years. I started at Cambridge. I moved to England. This comes back to Taylor Swift eventually, right? It does. Okay. <laughs> and when I got and when I got to England, uh -huh. when I got to England, I was trying to translate those forty thousand fake followers into real followers. Uh -huh. And I so I needed to make content that was as likely to hit the genuine explore page as possible because my followers are bots. So like yeah. I I need to hit the explore page because that's the only way I'm going to get real fans. And the things that I had to work with were my face, my body, like I had to be I had to think of myself as yeah, how to market an yourself. asset in these photos. Yeah, and my dating life and the stories I would tell in my cap in yeah, my drama, writing, sex, party, fighting, yeah, all yeah. that stuff. And I was never going to hit the explore page dating a woman. It needed to be me and a man. And like, I think to a larger extent growing up and, you know, Taylor Swift started making content in a public way. I started at what, like 20? Like she started at yeah, like 14. 15, yeah. And so she had five more years of that. And I think, you know, making that content through the late aughts and the early 2010s and right around when these photos were taken in like 2014, mm -hmm. like she was even if she never thought it consciously, she was 100% drawn to – she wants to be – she wants as many people as possible to hear she her music. She wants to be big. Like, she wants to I be know big. She, everybody says she spent those like six years in the woods with Joe. No way. Like she likes the fame. She likes and the I spotlight love that for on her. her and like, she's good at it. Yes. You know? And it, it's such a talent of hers. And mm. she – it's such a healthy ambition for people to have. I hate when people sometimes – when they ask me like my dream and I say I want to be a famous memoirist, I think they stop listening after famous and they put on me these characteristics of like gold digging or shallow mm. or attention hungry. And it's really more like, no, I just want the I believe in my writing. I think it's good. And I want the maximum number of people to read it. And mm. I think Taylor feels the same way. She believes in her songs. She yeah. believes in her songwriting. And she wants the maximum number of people to hear it. She cares a lot about the stats. She cares a yes. lot about the awards. And she will achieve those things better with male protagonists. Today's episode of Fluently Forward is brought to you by Pear Eyewear. I love Pear because they let you swap out your top frames of eyeglasses or sunglasses for any event any occasion. They have such a wide variety of different ways that you can change up your look here. I'm currently here in Florida with my mom and we just got our colors done. Okay. She's an autumn and the lady said that I was an autumn, but I don't believe her. I think that I'm a spring or a summer, but whatever. The point being, if you want to change up your look, sometimes going from like a light brown frame to a dark brown frame, it was crazy learning everything about how these different colors and styles can really enhance your face, make you look healthier, your skin look clear, all of this stuff. Now, Pear also has a new holiday collection, so maybe you want to wear something a little bit dynamic and joyful for the holiday season. Go check them out. They have a bunch of different frame styles. You're going to find something that you like there. So you can make every look merry this holiday season with Pear Eyewear. So go to PearEyewear.com slash fluently and you'll get 15% off your first pair. So that's Pear P A I R, eyewear.com slash fluently. One of the things that I hate to say it bothers me about Taylor Swift, and it bo this bothers me about Tree, all celebrities. If you're listening, I don't, whatever she's about to say, I don't agree. I love Taylor Swift. Yeah, Caroline denounces it. I, I, I immediately know, immediately know. But I think that, I think this is very level headed. Anytime a celebrity is trying to play both sides of a persona that are antithetical to each other, it kind of bothers me. So I saw this like when Cole Sprouse was doing the Call Her Daddy interview. And for half of the interview, he's going, oh, I'm like this philosopher at age 30. I have it all figured out. And then the other half of the interview, he's like, come on, man, we're just trying to put food on the table. Like you could grab <laughs> really? a drink with me at the bar at the airport. And it's like, Oh my god! What I do you? I didn't see it. It that was sounds awful. not good. Oh my gosh! But I did see my friend Jack's impression of it, which was really Very the good only, Jack the only so good. And he's honestly, dating Lily if you Reinhardt only need now. to watch one of those two things, Jack's performance yeah. is the one to watch. I thought it was he's stunning. incredible, and that's how he met Lily Reinhardt, right? Yes. And they ended up dating. I, but such a good him story. on the show was just so confusing, and I find like Haley Bieber confusing too. When half of the time she's like, I am you know, devoutly religious. I'm so sweet with Justin Bieber. I don't like to get involved in the drama. But then she goes out wearing a Nepo baby t-shirt and has paparazzi take a picture of her in a parking garage before she changes out of it. And it's like, 
So you are kind of messy or like, are you not? Like you're telling me two different things. So what are the two sides do you think Taylor is So I feel like it's been a variety of things. So one thing that Taylor has done is over the last six years, she said, privacy is sacred to me. I like being in the woods, playing Scrabble, quiet. I don't like anything. I don't like any of the attention. It tears everything apart. But then now she's dating Maddie Healy. She's professing her love for him on stage. She's going to the football games, arms around Travis. They're both going to SNL together. So it's just the dichotomy of like, well, you just told us for six years you don't want any attention, but like, should we be giving you attention? Is that okay? And then follow up, she also says all the time too, like, it's very sexist to say that a woman is calculated when you say that a man is strategic. But then in all of her songs, she's like, I'm a mastermind. I got a list of names. I'm like taking my time. I plot things out. And it's like, okay, so then like you can say that you're calculated, but we can't. Or she'll say in interviews, like, it's very sexist to make everything about my dating life. But girl, like you made your song, Dear John, you made it style. Like you had those liner notes at the beginning. Like you're confessing your love for Maddie Healy, like on stage. So like, can I please say that like you do date a lot? Like I'm not saying it's bad, but I just feel like Taylor will say like, here's all these things about me, but like you can't say it. And I I completely understand that people get to change their mind for sure. Like, of course they do. But when you're a celebrity and the narrative is such opposite sides and it seems to go back and forth, it's just confusing to me as a viewer or as a fan. Like, do you like attention or do you not? And like, are you calculated or am I not allowed to say that? Like, I just don't know where it really falls with her. Yeah, I think both of those things that you cited are totally true. Like they <laughs> I, <laughs> suck my dick tree pain. <laughs> no, but but I think that they've been true at like different times. Like I, I've never seen Taylor who wanted like peace and quiet was mm. Tree, I hope you're still listening. <laughs> don't, don't, don't click off Tree. Stay for 30 more seconds, I promise. But, um, but she wanted peace like six years ago. And bro, now she's doing this global eras tour. Of course she wants to be back in the spotlight now. It's like having the all eyes on her is like part of making history with the movie opening, with the ticket sales, with the how much she's generating for the economy. Well, then, don't like, you feel like that's a of... little hypocritical where it's like, you no, can give she me... she has to do her job. No, no, I just mean in the sense of like, you can give me attention if it's accolades and buying all of my stuff, but the minute you have something to say that's kind of negative or you don't like, then that's like rude and harmful media speculation and there's none of that. It just kind of seems like like if you're going to if you want all eyes on you, then you have to understand that people are going to like say that you're dating. But it seems like she wants all of the accolades, all of the awards, all of the VMAs, but none of the questioning about like, well, why aren't you speaking out about this when you did a political documentary? Like you say that you're not dating, but like you're saying that you love this guy on stage. Like it just seems like um and I understand none of us are good at criticism. It's just confusing to me because I feel like there's some celebrities where like Rihanna's very consistent with what she does. You know, um, Miley Cyrus is very consistent with like her brand. But I feel like people like Taylor, Haley Bieber, even Selena Gomez, right? Like this has been kind of the year where people thought she was like all about kindness, but it seems like maybe she's also a little bit messy. So those are the celebrities I just kind of struggle with because I don't know what they're about. I think maybe also like, I have a horse in this race, and it's not um, Taylor Swift bought your life rights along with Lena Dunham. Well, hey, they're pretty close, though. I, they they are pretty close. Yeah. I mean, Taylor Swift, the only person who's able to stay friends with both Lena Dunham <laughs> and Jack Antonoff after that breakup. Yeah. Um, but no, I I'm so deeply flawed and chaotic and messy and contradictory mm -hmm. that it's like, my God, if we're picking apart Taylor Swift for being these things, like I have no hope. No, but, but, this, but you know what? Can I say that's the thing? Like it's not even picking apart. Like I feel like anytime you say like a valid critique of Taylor Swift, people are like, what a poor girl. She just made a billion dollars on the tour. Or they're like, you're picking her apart. And it's like, but if I said this about a man, you wouldn't say it. Like, like if I'm picking her apart, that's if I'm saying her pores are too big or she does this or I hate the way her like whiny voice sounds. But I think this is just like a critique for all celebrities. I don't think it's picking them apart. I think it's smart to have a media PR person who shapes your narrative so that way you appear consistent. And if you don't, then that's the fault 
of Tree Pain, who I'm sorry if you're still listening. <laughs> Bro, I literally, I need to stop coming on these podcasts that are like anti Tree. I am not researching these podcasts no, I, well enough. I love, I, I love Tree Pain. She, she's a red haired goddess. No, you know? no, 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 for sure. Best publicist. Um, I, and I also just think you're a lovely person. I just disagree with you fundamentally on with the wanting, wanting exposure and wanting not, I think you're allowed to go through like, at least if you're consistent for like over six months to a year, if and that's what you've been doing. Like Taylor hasn't been complaining about people speculating on her dating life. She's yeah. let the Maddie Healy thing. She even let the Joe Alwyn thing play out. She's letting the Travis Kelsey that's thing. That's true. She's and not so going. She's, you know, she's, she's in the spotlight. She's being consistent with it. When she was in the forest playing Scrabble, she was being <laughs> consistent with it. And with the mastermind thing and the like, her like. I have so, so you think maybe that was old Taylor because in a lot of those I quotes, think people are allowed to change and as long as you're like have six months backlog of like that behavior I think you're allowed to I'm, I mean I just I sorry I, I cut you off what were you <laughs> going to say I'm no, so sorry I'll say I that's a good point and I'll meet you there right because she's not you're right like she's not in these interviews being like why won't people leave me and yeah, Travis that was alone before. and then going to SNL so yeah. that's in the past so and from so, here so, on out, she's she's shiny Taylor who likes the attention. Until she goes back to the woods, in which case she's allowed to want to be in the and woods. And she crawls back up into that tree and she doesn't come out for three years yeah, with another album. Yeah, and she's allowed album. to do that. And she's allowed to go but hibernate. That's even and the then, language, like, of course she's allowed. I'm not okay. saying she's not allowed. I'm just saying that's what I think. Okay, you know, and I feel like so many people get so defensive of Taylor. And it's like, dude, she is a billionaire with eight houses and two private jets. Like, she's okay, you know? Yes, but also mental health can affect anyone Although I do think Taylor Swift is like, mm, I hope to God she just doesn't listen to any podcast ever. Just the she, Huberman show and like that's it. <laughs> um, but what I was going to say about the mastermind thing, yeah, and the, that part of your argument is that I literally was accused of being a scammer. Sure. So I wrote a book called Scammer. I think if you're accused of you're dating a lot of embracing people, embracing it or yeah, something. Yeah, I think as someone who has lived through it, those. They won't stop calling you those things. Like, I was never going to ditch the scamming accusations after Natalie mm -hmm. of, like, you know, I had someone else write my my captions and I I lied to people, like, saying that I could write. Of course, my first book had to be called Scammer and it had to be good. And the Washington Post called it a masterpiece and it's available at carolyngalloway.com. There we go. Of course that had to happen. Yeah. But, like. The only way you can reclaim that stuff is if you make it into your art. And that's the only way you can defang those words and take the poison out of them and make them your baby and something that you love. So she made Mastermind. So she made blank space when she was getting. And I do think she's at her best when she does that. Yes. And I like when people stare into the skid. And I would say my advice for any of these celebrities is Cole Sprouse. Ditch the everyman persona and just go with the douchey philosopher that you yes, are. Exactly. And Haley Bieber, ditch the good girl act and go full bitch on us because I will <laughs> yes. embrace you if you like Naomi Campbell it up. If, like, if come on. She could be IRL Regina George and everyone ah. would be like, slay, slay Haley. <laughs> I think we're ready to embrace a mean girl. You <laughs> yeah. know what I mean? Yeah, like, yeah, yeah. I just feel like it's been a little if bit. If she just too, went um, full villain era, we would. We'd eat that shit up. People but, um, do. The way that people like still love Blair Waldorf and whenever I watch Gossip Girl, I'm like, you're this classist bitch who plots out revenge like you love her. They're like, yeah, we love her. <laughs> I'm like, yeah, I love her. <laughs> I'm like, I love Blair. She okay, was my favorite. Let's real quick talk okay. about another uh, Gail. You go. No, 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 no. So I was just going to say, so those are my two things. So I don't think she's being And they were both good with... points. Thank you. Good points were made all around. Thank you. They Tree were, is they still were. listening. Yeah, yeah, yeah. He Today's episode of Fluently Forward is brought to you by Bowl and Branch. Me checking in on you right now. How'd you sleep last night? Did you toss and turn? Did you feel hot, cold? I have sometimes woken up covered in sweat all over my sheets. And sometimes I'm just a sensory girl. Sometimes I don't like the way that sheets fit or they feel or they scratch on my skin, which is why I'm so excited that Bowl and Branch is a sponsor of this show. I've been using Bowl and Branch sheets for... God, almost half a year now, basically, and I absolutely adore them. They're the softest sheets I've ever slept in. They're literally built different, okay? They're made from 100% 
organic cotton here. They're free from any of the toxins and they do this incredible thing where they get softer after each wash and they actually feel better. So you can get the chance to have these bowl and branch sheets yourself. I cannot recommend them enough. So give you and your loved ones a better night's sleep this holiday season. Get 20% off of your first order plus free shipping when you use the promo code fluently at bowlandbranch.com. So that's bowl and branch, B-O-L-L-A-N-D branch.com with the promo code fluently. And this is a limited time only. Exclusions apply. See the site for details. Here's another point I have for you. Have you heard that Olivia Rodrigo is a secret gailer? No. When she is. She is one of us, baby. Okay. There's a few different points Wait, here. Can I tell you something that you can bleep out yeah. of the podcast? I'm worried it's going to be on film. I just. This is. The woman. Who she's doing. My oh. And so I'm. Can I'll ask. Please. I will. I'll ask. Please and do. I'll, I'll text you about it. Okay. Well post bleeping out that <laughs> here's basically the tea is um i think also to olivia rodrigo and her latest album has the song lacy some people think it could be about a variety of things i think it has to be gracie to me it's come giving, on she has a lacy, crush on gracie Abrams. lacy gracie come on what are we doing the, the edits when my obviously as a gayler um a gayler. A, a, a gayler. I don't even need – I was going to say fanatic, but sure, I could just say gayler. Fanatic. They're kind of synonyms. In, it's implied, yeah. <laughs> um, my For You page on TikTok is just like all edits of like lacy, the lacy song. songs. They're like, is it Madison well, Beer? Is it Gracie Sabrina Abrams? Sabrina Carpenter. I'm like, stop. I'm like, I'm like, don't show me this anymore. This is not correct. No, I'm like, it's Gracie Abrams, and it Obviously. does such a good job of talking about the – I envy you, but I love I you. love you, and yeah. then I hate that I envy you, but then I hate that I love you, and I love that I envy you. It's a great song, Lacey. So beautiful. So good. And there's three pieces. It's like Natalie's cut essay, but make it art. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Just put a soft guitar behind it. Yeah, yeah, it. but make it excellent art. <laughs> and then make it rhyme. Yeah. So we have three real pieces of evidence here, and then some that's speculative. Yes. Number one, when Taylor Swift played Betty, I think at like the CMAs or something, somebody on Instagram, whose handle at first was Step On Me Olivia, said, nice. did you see Taylor's Betty performance? And if so, how are you still alive? And Olivia responded and said, it's the rainbow strings for me. Right? Betty, a lot of people think could have some queer vibes to it. She played a guitar with rainbow strings on it. And then Olivia also liked two TikToks. Number one, this is a screenshot from it. It says, caption is, hashtag rare Kaler pictures, Gaylor. And it's some pictures of Taylor Swift and Carly Kloss, not, not too unlike some of the ones that we have up here. And then she also liked another TikTok of a guy. And it says, Taylor Swift, when someone asked her about why she wrote a song about a secret romance that was doomed from the start using the central metaphor of Alice in Wonderland, a.k.a. Alice, or, AKA Diana Agron's favorite book that she had a Tumblr account and tattoo in reference to. So that's basically a TikTok alleging that the song Wonderland is about her romance with Diana Agron. And Olivia liked both of those TikToks, okay? You don't like those TikToks without that's, being that's a gayler. And um, I'm pretty sure Iris Apatow mm -hmm. dated Joe Alwyn's younger brother. brother. Yeah. And they're very close. So maybe somebody knew somebody knew something. I mean, I personally think, you know, Taylor Swift is bi. I don't think that like Joe was a six year long beard. Yeah. No, um, that is so. Cr yeah. No, I think that they that, were real That for is sure. so crazy when people like. <laughs> Do you think any of her past flames? I think Harry Styles was fake. What? Oh, yeah. I don't think her and Harry Styles dated for real. Do you think any of them were fake relationships? Wait, okay. Okay. First of all, I. My mind is being blown because I feel like you're more knowledgeable about this than I am. So like it's I not, it's just illusions, but yeah, thanks for saying that. No, I yeah, I totally think that they were real. And I totally think that like during the like mid 2000 tons, she had like sort of a toxic draw to him. To Harry Styles. Yeah. Maybe it's just I just don't get the Harry Styles pull I think for me. There, you know, there's that um if you listen to the lyrics in in style, the way that it matches up with the song "Perfect" in One Direction, no, but that oh, okay. too. But um, no style. Like she talks about it, like we go round and round each time. We keep getting back together. Like that implied, we keep getting back together. You come over, like I think it's the opening line is midnight. Yeah, yeah, yeah <laughs> exactly. It's like this late 
hookup thing that's mm-hmm. like very secret and then on 1989 you have that other well uh, one could argue about, that uh you know style know pick places. me up with no headlights is a reference to driving treacherous with the headlights home and that song could be about diana agron go check out cam's what i will say podcast for anyone who wants more on that but I there's think, just you know there's so you think that every guy she's ever dated was a real relationship yes wow even john mayer Yes, I think she was heartbroken by him. Okay, okay. Yeah, wow. I I genuinely think. Have you so. read the book uh, Seven Husbands of Evelyn Hugo? And do you no, think one day? No, I haven't, day... but I own it. Ah, and I, you'll love it. I Yeah, I will. I, I think that they're all real. I think Taylor Swift is Corny. a better... <laughs> what? Corny. <laughs> I think Taylor Swift is... Blackout horny. I think she's <laughs> that was the one clip you used. I saw <laughs> I saw that chair dance vigilante <laughs> shit. I was like, girl, me too. <laughs> okay, but, no, but you think no, that they're all real. I just think even Tom had it all stuff. Yes, what? <laughs> I, I, Why do you what? think? Here's, of course, okay, they're all real. Then here's an honest question: Why do you think he wore the I Heart TS shirt? Because he's a little corny. He went to Cambridge. <laughs> We're all fucking idiots. I don't fucking know. Because uh, <laughs> he's just he's he's just like a corny old British man. I I like I don't know. If you went to Cambridge and you saw some of the like stupid shit that they do for American pussy, you get it, okay? <laughs> Like I'm honestly, that's not even the worst thing I've seen a British man do. I Miss was like, Americana yeah. pussy. <laughs> yeah, I was like, and I'm not even Taylor Swift, so like, my God, of course he fucking did that. I'm with. I do think that the majority is real. There's a very interesting, and we had um, NT on a couple episodes back talking about Martin Johnson from Boys Like Girls, and Ooh, a lot of people. Who is this? So he's a he's the lead singer of Boys Like Girls. What is that? Boys Like Girls. They did. Um, God, what did they do? They've done a lot of songs that were popular back in the day. They were like, in like punk. the eighties or the nineties. No, or... he's like, he's like our age, basically. You definitely know boys like girls. Hold okay. on, let me look up some of their songs here. Um, th- like in high school, boys like girls. Okay, the Great Escape. You know the Great Escape. You know the Great Escape. Two is better than one. Love drunk. I used to be love drunk, but now I'm hungover. Anyway, they were like a punk band okay. in like high school. And Taylor Swift, they both did Two is Better Than One, a duet together. And Taylor Swift dated Martin Johnson back in the day, but they were never public about it. Uh And every feature about him lines up with John Mayer. He's the dark-haired boy with tattoos and a bad boy reputation. He was struggling with drugs and alcohol at the time, and Taylor's parents didn't want them to be together. And they were dating. Ashley Tisdale has actually said this before on a podcast because she dated him after Taylor Swift, and she let it slip that they were dating. But not a lot of people know about it because they didn't walk red carpets together. But a lot of people think that the songs that are about John Mayer are actually about Martin Johnson, and she never actually dated John Mayer because I have heard tea from a friend of a friend that John Mayer himself has said that he's never dated Taylor Swift, which is why he was so upset that Dear John was made to be about him when really Dear John was Martin Johnson. And all of those songs, ours, that's about Martin Johnson, and he's the secret relationship. Wow. Yeah. I'm... I'm you know so much. See, this is what I mean. Like, I did not know any of that. And that's it's really interesting. Here's why I think that Taylor Swift didn't. I love how you keep looking back at the picture of Taylor and Carly. It, it is really a work of art, this Vogue photo shoot that they did. This is m- one of my favorite photos. From when we were picking out, um, like, photos for, to put up there, yeah. I was like, that one, that one, pick that and one. For anyone on audio, <laughs> this was my choice it's them in the, the car photos. with Carly taking yeah. a, a Polaroid picture of uh, Taylor Swift there. Um, I just think that Taylor Swift is a better person than I am. Sure. And, <laughs> full stop. I, I don't think know. Some of her merch is a little snake oily with those prices, but. Listen, <laughs> Blondie, treat fire your merch designer what is wrong with you guys you could make such the merch is no good dude the merch is no good making this i I, give me a fucking ipad and like one of those little stylus pens and i can do better for you guys yeah but um but i just think that she's a better person than i am and i think she's a harder worker and has better mental health she's got a great work ethic less she's very addiction prone she just has like a better brain and she is just, I just, 
and she's so kind. Like I'm, I can be so petty and so vindictive. Oh, like, come on. She can't, she can too. She can too, but she has it in her to be smarter about it and like more long-term. Like I get a mean comment and I'll, I'll literally respond. I'll be like, fuck you. I hate yeah. you. Like she would the never be so Taylor will sloppy. like sit on that and like, and then seven years later you get fired from your job and it's like, she's the one who did yes, it. You know? I know, but that's, I aspire to like, she's better okay, but see, I everything think, than I, I think am. that's she, like psycho. Like, like if no, you plot out no, revenge, no, I'm like, oh my God, what's going on in no, there? No, she is just, I just don't think she has it in her and she's just more pure of heart. And I just don't think she has it in her. She's to, a special woman. She's I don't certainly think she a special has it woman. in her to fake date people. I think she is sincerely like she's done so much to protect her like childlike element of wonder and surprise. And she's well, always a been question. anti cringe. What do you think? He, an interesting or like pro cringe, anti anti cringe, pro, yeah, pro anti. cringe. Yeah, like you know what I'm trying to say. There's this fascinating theory that she gets so pissed about people calling her a serial dater, and I don't believe this one, but it's just a fun thought ex exercise. That she gets so pissed about people saying she's dating all these men because they're all fake dating, and she's really dating women, and that's why she hates the label of being a serial dater so much because she's not, because they're all fake. Now, I don't think it's true, but it's fun to try on for size, isn't it? I don't think that's true at all because. Which of your, was... which of her boyfriends has been your favorite? Joe. Yeah. All win, right? Not Jonas. <laughs> Jonas. I love Joe Jonas. I'm a Joe Jonas. And I'm anti, so, no, are you, I can't even finish this. Let me, <laughs> but um, yeah. no, I'm so pro Sophie. And um, yeah, I like Joe. Yeah. Okay. Now, as we wrap up here, because we're coming to a close, two last questions for you. Number one, favorite ex-girlfriend, alleged, of Taylor Swift? Carly Clark. What yeah. Is, we, I, I have questions for you. Okay. What are your – I'm like, we're wrapping up. I'm like, what about my <laughs> questions? I'm not fucking done. Um, I know we only booked the studio for a limited amount of time, but I have questions that need answers. I'll, I'll, do, um, I'll take one question. Wait. Can I ask you – I'll take two. Okay. Okay, go. Oh, well, okay. Will you do? Will you do the same <laughs> questions of boyfriend girlfriend, and then can I ask you my other question? Yeah. Okay. okay. So your favorite? My I don't want to waste my two. My on your favorite, favorite girlfriend alleged was also Carly Claus. Something so special about those two twinning out in public. And my favorite boyfriend of hers. I know nobody likes him, but something about Calvin Harris. I just thought, what a tall man, and I like the way he hugged her at that award show, and tweeted on her behalf. So I liked Calvin Harris. He's but got. He's Scottish. <laughs> Okay, okay. Um, oh, I had so many Taylor Swift blind item questions. Um, well, you know what? Next time I'm here in Florida, we'll have to do a blind item. So here's the real last one I'll give okay. you then. What do you see in the future for Taylor? Do you Romantically, do you see her getting married to Travis Kelsey? Do you see her having kids, no kids, living in the woods again? What do you predict? I think she will have kids. Okay. I think she'll be a wonderful mom. And I, I don't know. I don't see it being with Travis, but mm, I, okay. do you? I, I know there's that like dusty ass boyfriend theory <laughs> going around. Like you date like one loser after and the, then one the next thought, one. And then the next one is. Yeah. And I do, I, although I, I do believe in the dusty ass boyfriend theorem. Yeah. Um, but she, she defies typical you know, yeah. rules because she's she's such a powerhouse. Yes. But um I, I think they're a lovely couple. I think he's gonna be good to her. Yeah, I think he will be really I good. I actually to her. don't see her having children. I think in a lot of interviews she's talked about how she never really has that urge. I think it's something that we kind of put upon her. But I think she would be a you know a good mom. Um I think she'd be an amazing mom. But yeah, I don't know. I think maybe she might be single for a few more years until she finds someone in her late thirties. Yeah. I yeah. yeah, I don't think it will be Travis. And I do I think she'll have kids late, like Rachel Weiss late. Like, yeah, sort of like early forties kids. I like that. Um, okay, here's my one question okay. that I get. Sure. Do you believe the that she dated Maddie he since you're a fake Taylor boyfriend truther, <laughs> yeah. do you believe that she dated Maddie Healy to cover up a the SEO, SEO results of for Taylor 1975? Swift nineteen seventy five? Because that was the concert Carly she Swa allegedly Carly yeah, Kloss, kissed her Carly at. Carly Swaft is not a good um, couple name for them. But um, um, and do you believe that she's 
updated Travis to cover up the jet thing. So I like think Taylor Swift I jets. think the SEO jets, right? Taylor Swift jets. It used to be her private jet mm-hmm. emissions. Now it's her at the Jets game with you know Travis Kelsey. I think that was a happy coincidence. I don't yeah. think that she looked at the schedule and like worked it I back. Think they were both happy. Maddie Healy, 1975. I think that's also a happy coincidence, just because they've been in contact. We we did a whole Taylor Swift Maddie Healy timeline episode here on Fluently Forward with Cam a couple months ago I and she's meet Cam and Cam knows everything I and she's Cam, been like very Florida. plugged in um so they've kept in contact for the last 10 years and I think that there was always something there but don't you love a good SEO conspiracy theory I'll put my hat on for anything I think it's fun yeah I obviously don't believe it and I really think that Taylor Swift is so big I love the word overexposed it's such a good PR word And she's written about so many things under the sun, under her 10 eras. And she's had, she's been in the public eye since she was fucking, I mean, if you're- 14-ish, yeah. I I would say 15, just if you're not going to be generous, like since she was 15. Like she's had something connected to almost every noun ever. And everything she does now will have nouns that connect to other nouns and it's Touch just a me happy... and you never be alone even with the nouns you yeah know? exactly yeah exactly so that's well this was a good debate yeah, i feel let's like let's go we, have uh, mocktails at my place we'll go have mocktails we'll talk about taylor blind items yes. and for anyone who wants to read your lore irl caroline calloway.com yes. is where you've got your scammer book and then there's two more in the trilogy coming out yes scammers out and then the next two are coming by the end of this year Three books in six months. This year? This year, yeah. 2023? Yeah, 2023. Oh, my God. Yeah, I'm actually, I'm going back to Cambridge to launch them. I'm going to make an announcement soon, but I might as well say this on your podcast first. I got invited to speak at the Cambridge Union. This is awesome. Yeah, so I'm going back to Cambridge University to launch the next two books in the trilogy. The way your entire head needs to be decked out with so many flowers yeah. and like a ball count, you know, like there we go. I know. I'm so excited. And a lot of my British friends from London were doing a big dinner in Cambridge, going back to mm. their stomping grounds beforehand. There we go. Yeah. It's well, Caroline, fun. thank you for coming thank on the show. Thank you for Excited coming all the way to happens. Sarasota just for me, it's, for no other stuff. reason but this podcast. And you promised a mocktail, so I'm here okay. for that too. <laughs> all right. For everyone else, we will see you next week for another episode of Fluently Forward. Bye, guys. Bye.